In this video, we're going to talk about topic 7.7, .7, solving radical equations. Um, and we're going to learn how do you solve a radical equation, and I can solve an equation with a radical. So we're going to start with this little investigation here. So when solving radical or quadratic equations, you have learned that the number of real-world solutions depends on the values in the equation, or different equations having 0, 1, or 2 real solutions. How many real solutions does the square root equation have? In the Explore, you will investigate graphically the numbers of real world solutions for different square root equations. Remember that you can graph the two sides of an equation as separate functions to find the solution to equation. A solution is any x value where the two graphs intersect. So we're going to start by graphing y equals um, the square root of x minus 3 on this viewing window and this viewing window and then reproduce and then add the graph of y equals 2. So we're going to use Desmos to do that. I've already got f of x in there and we're going to use, we're going to use the square root which you can just start typing um, sqrt and that will get you the square root. It's also over here in the little functions there. Okay, let's back that out. And then I'm going to type x minus 3 and then I'm also going to type, and it doesn't matter if you use f of x or y equals, I'm also going to type y equals 2. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to change the settings. So I'm hitting the little wrench, changing the settings on the viewing window to what they suggested, which was that I want my x to be between negative 4 and 16. And my y should be between. Let me put this down. My y should be between um, negative 2 and 8. All right, so now you'll notice that in intersections, they only intersect one time with what I have right here. So let's put that on there. So they have one time, and it's because they intersect one time. Okay, um, I don't know why that got repeated twice, so I have no idea why we have this question in there two times. When you calculate a graph, the y equals 2, or replace the graph of y equals 2 with y equals negative 1. So let's do that. So let's take out the negative 2 and let's go negative 1. And you'll notice now they do not intersect at all. So in this case, they would have zero solutions because they don't intersect. Zero because they don't intersect. Okay, let's skip down to the reflect and see what happened. So for a square, I'm looking at number one. For a square root of the form b, square root of bx minus h equals c, can you, what can you conclude about the number of solutions based on the sign of c. So if c was a positive number, it was a positive number, there was one solution. If there was a negative number, there were no solutions. Okay. Let's look at b. So now we're going to graph y equals the square root of x minus 3 plus 2. So it looks like I could adjust what I have in there. So I'm going to just go plus 2. So I shifted it up a bit. And then we are supposed to, um, let's see, we're, we're supposed to set it equal to here. We're supposed to set it equal to 3 and then equal to 1. So let's start with equal to 3. So y equals 3. And we look like we have one intersection point because they cross once. So one, and then we're going to put the one in there. And look at, there's no intersection points. So let's see what happens with that. So there are none. So let's reflect on that a little bit. So if I come down here to question number two, for a square root of the form, this is the square root of bx minus h plus k equals c. What can you conclude about the number of solutions based on the values of c 
and k. Well, you notice what we did was in the first equation, the value of this number was, which was I believe was their, what they're saying is the k value was smaller than the value of c. So it was k was less than c and we had one solution. Here, k was greater than c, and we had no solution. So let's see if we can summarize that a little bit. So if, that's if, c is greater than k, then there's one solution. If c is less than k, then there's no solutions.